no chickens will be harmed in the making of, of this video. So a few weeks ago, some of you challenged me to cook pinik pikan. This dish is famous in the Philippines because it comes uh, from the Cordilleras region and it's derived from the root word pikpik, -pik, meaning to, to hit or to beat. It's an interesting and perhaps controversial dish dito sa Pilipinas because that hitting of the chicken actually takes place while the chicken is alive in traditional igorot cooking. And you know, people have their, their, their different opinions on that. You know, obviously I come from Australia, we don't tend to beat up the chicken before we, we eat it. So obviously these beliefs come from sort of animist background and, and traditions that are important to, to people uh, here in the Philippines uh, about the way that they have cooked for centuries and what that means for them and their families and their traditions. So while I'm totally respectful of Igorot traditions, I'm also asking my fans who asked me to cook pinapikan today uh, that I will not be beating the chicken, I won't be uh, killing the chicken, and I won't be burning the chicken uh, afterwards during the course of this recipe. I'm just going to start off with a native chicken that has not been beaten and no chickens will be harmed in the making of, of this video. Uh, so basically, yung, ito yung, yung manok mo na, yung native chicken, right? So there's your native chicken. Now if you're doing this in the Cordillera, you would actually take the chicken while it was still alive and basically hold it on the bench and pin its head down and pretty much beat it really hard uh, with a, a sort of a bat or heavy stick piece of wood. Then you would actually kill the chicken, uh, you would pluck the chicken feathers, you take a lot of the chicken feathers out, uh, and then the remaining chicken feathers that are hard to get, rather than, you know, normally you can remove them through boiling, uh, you would actually heat those over an open fire uh, to actually burn the outside of the chicken and burn off the remaining feathers. So we end up with sort of this blackened uh, chicken that's been uh, cooked uh, on the outside in the fire to remove the feathers. So we're just going to skip all of those steps and start with our native chicken. You know, the way you want to prepare this, if you have a whole one, first you use the cleaver. This cleaver is really cool. It's really thick and heavy at the back, so it just gives a lot of weight. And what I want to do is remove the leg and the thigh parts first of the chicken. There it is. You can see I don't do a lot of cleaving of chickens. I normally prefer to buy these already uh, cut up, but it's you know a bit daunting the first time if you do this at home. But you just kind of got to find the right point, and then you hit it with your heavy cleaver with a bit of confidence. The next thing I'm going to do is I've got two pieces of uh, ginger here, about an inch each, and I'm just going to uh, pound these. I'm just going to give my ginger uh, a minute or two to infuse with that hot oil in the pan. And then I'll start adding my chicken pieces and I'll braise these in the, the hot pan. Now, my native chicken came with the livers, so I'm just gonna throw that in as well. Now, it's a shame we couldn't find the real uh, etag. I was um, hopeful we could get it, but sometimes you just can't find things in a hurry. If anybody knows where to get good etag here in Manila, Please leave me a comment below. I'd love to find a good source of uh, etag because it's delicious. And I've just added in my pork jerky that I'm using as a substitute today for the, uh, the etag. It's a little sweet. I think the etag is uh, gonna be, uh, give a saltier flavor, but I think the point is really to get some pork flavor in there and a bit of pork fat, which it'll do the job fine. Okay, so our chicken's got now nice uh, brown, it's braising away there, and I'm just going to add yung itong na ating rice wine. So I'm gonna do about a cup and a half of rice wine and then about a cup and a half of water. Season this with a little bit of salt and uh, I think paminta. I was in a restaurant the other day, Dito San Manila, and uh, I asked for the paminta. I say, you know, ate pahingi ng paminta. She says, what? I say, pahingi yung paminta. What? I say, yung paminta ate, paminta. And she goes, ah, pepper. And, you know, <laughs> it's so frustrating being a white guy trying to speak the dialogue in this town. <laughs> I just thought, like, come on. And I actually said, ate, marunong ka ba sa wikang pambansa? I mean, come on, uh, hindi mo alam yung, ano, yung salita ng paminta. Puro kang pepper, puro kang English lang. All right, so we'll bring this rice wine, water, salt, pepper seasoned. Uh, chicken and itag. We'll bring that to the boil, then let it simmer for you know 10-15 minutes. Allow sufficient duration for our chicken to fully cook through, uh, and for the uh, the sauces and flavors to infuse with the meat, the chicken and itag there. But in the meantime, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel. There's a button here. There's a button below. 
it's a big help for me if you guys can subscribe and help share this recipe with your friends, right? If you want to teach them about the magic of Filipino food. Okay, so my um, pinipikan has been simmering for a little while now, maybe five to ten minutes, started to reduce already. So I'm going to add in um, some sayote next. Uh, I've got about probably one whole sayote. Just cut into, you know, similar to tenoli, mga wedges of sayote. And I'll just taste the, the broth. Mm, it's quite, even for a short cooking time, quite flavorful. The, the rice one I'm using is a garlic onion infused one, so it actually adds to the, the savory and the depth of the flavor. Now I'm gonna add in next some, uh, some pachay, the, the napa cabbage. Just throw those in together. Always looks like quite a lot, but this will cook down um, pretty quickly, and I'll turn the heat off. Okay, so tapos na yung ating uh, pinikpikan. So challenge accepted. Here it is, guys. Hope you enjoy watching me cook this. I'm gonna plate it up now. Okay, so there it is, guys. Chicken pinikpikan. I'm actually, yeah, I'm pretty curious to try this. I mean, obviously, this will look a little different from the Cordillera one where they've burnt the, uh, the outside of the chicken. Um, if you're doing that at home, you can use a blowtorch if you want to get that, that effect where it's quite a blackened meat. So this does visually look different, but the flavors should be largely the, the same as, as what the guys asked me to cook. So um, let's, uh, let's give this a little go. All right, here we go. So it's interesting, it's definitely sweeter than tenola because the, the, the rice wine isn't as bitter as when you're sort of adding daho nang sili and malungai into the, into the mix. Uh, the chicken is really, really good. I mean, native chicken just tastes absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, you don't get much meat, but the, it, it's made up for in the taste. There you go. That's one of my first cooking challenges that I've done on this show. So if anybody else out there wants to challenge me to cook a particular recipe of the Philippines, you know, leave a comment or even film a, a little vlog response to my videos. I'd love to, uh, to see you guys. And if you want to challenge me to cook something in the Philippines, I'll go away and do the research. I'll work it out and I'll help you take that recipe global. So any of those little regional gems, right, that we have in the Philippines, let me know what you want to see and we'll have a go at it. It's been a pleasure having you. Do leave your comment below. Don't forget to share. I'm Chris Urbano. I will see you next time on Maputin Cooking. Thanks, guys. Bye.